Now, the UN's human rights chief will be in China this week. Michelle Bachelet is the first person in the job to visit China in 17 years. She's due to go to Xinjiang, the remote region where Beijing is accused of systematic abuse of China's Uyghur Muslim minority. Armin Georgian is with me now on the set for more on this. Armin, Michelle Bachelet has been criticized even before arriving in China. Why? Well, because human rights organizations are saying that uh, this cannot be a free and honest uh, and credible visit uh, and that it, that it doesn't even meet the UN's own criteria for uh, for such visits. The, the UN uh, terms for uh, these kinds of visits must, according to their own terms of reference, include freedom of movement uh, and unsupervised access to witnesses. Uh, in the current context, of course, it's very hard to see uh, those terms of reference actually being followed. And indeed, the Chinese government has said today that the UN rights chief's visit will be conducted in a so-called closed loop. That's uh, essentially a, a kind of bubble. It's uh, language used from the COVID pandemic, but obviously the same human rights organizations are saying that's simply a cover for not giving her access to people that might contradict the official uh, version of events. It's also been confirmed that there will not be media representatives traveling with Michelle Bachelet, so clearly a very orchestrated visit, but for human rights groups, including, of course, uh, you know, the organizations like the Uyghur Human Rights Project, uh, this is going to be essentially a propaganda coup, they say, and that it would have been important to use this first visit, as you mentioned in your introduction, first visit in 17 years by UN Human Rights Chief to uh, have a, a more impartial drawing of attention to the plight of the Uyghurs. Armin, what about outside of China? Is the world increasing its pressure against the country? Well, in recent years, we've had various parliaments, mostly in the West, it has to be said, uh, coming out with uh, various uh, quite strong, strongly worded statements saying that China's policies amount to genocide in Xinjiang. Uh, China, of course, fiercely denies that, saying this is the lie of the century, that these are not internment camps, but uh, but uh, vocational training facilities and, uh, and things of that nature. But uh, what we've also seen is that uh, the West is actually, if you look at um, what happened at the UN last October, uh, the West is is uh, in actually a kind of minority in the way it approaches this whole Uyghur issue. Uh, the, the, at the UN in October, 40 countries criticized China because of its record in Xinjiang, but 62 countries supported China or expressed forms of, of support in one way or another, which really shows you how, you know, the West can be quite blinkered in thinking that the rest of the world thinks about foreign policy the way that the West does. The fact is the rest of the world does not. Uh, Many other countries believe in this in, uh, principle of non-interference in the sovereign affairs of a country. That was one of the reasons they used to justify uh, not following the West at the UN or Western countries in October. Uh, but also, of course, there are these economic links between uh, many countries and China, which affect the way they approach this human rights issue. Not forgetting, of course, the Belt and Road Initiative, which has drawn in uh, countries closer to China, like Kazakhstan, Pakistan and Tajikistan. And all of those countries, naturally, at least at the official level, are reluctant to openly criticize the Chinese government. Armin, thank you for that. France 24's Armin Georgian.